Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Maranada. I am Talita Chako and uh, this is Jijo Thomas and we have Mr. Jamon John with us today and he's all the way from Houston, Texas and Mr. Jamon John, can you introduce yourself? Good evening and thank you everyone. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Jamon John. I'm in Houston, Texas. Uh, my wife is Nancy Jamon and we have four kids. Uh, they all are in the school. The oldest one started working. Uh, so we are settled in Houston. We came as a family here and we are staying in Houston, Texas. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Jamon. Uh, welcome to the show and welcome to this interview. I'm sure there's uh, our viewers want to know a little bit more about you and uh, what we're doing here right now. Um, so uh, from my understanding, you are involved in ministry. Correct. Right, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, yes. and uh, so could you tell us a little bit about uh, how you started? Uh, how did you start this this thing that you're doing now? So we uh, moved to Houston in 2006 as a family. Wow. Uh, I was in Delhi in India uh, and working there as a foundry consultant. So what is that foundry consultant? What is that? Really? So it's a, a field of metallurgical metallurgist. So, oh. uh, so I was a doctor to the metals. Wow. So that was my job. Uh, so I used to visit all the factories and uh, gave them the solution how to deal with all those problems that they have in casting of metals. Oh wow! So you're a lot into chemis chemistry right. and all, right? Yes. Different uh, tables and different all those kind of things. Right. right. Wow. Wow. So what kind of music did you play while uh, uh, in, in those factories? Rock music? No, right? It's not or heavy metal? No. Uh, yeah, you can say that, different types of metal, you know. So uh, I used to deal with all the metals, whether it is copper, brass, aluminum, uh, okay. steel. So those were the places where I used to visit. They cast, they melt those metal and cast and make the, you know, the, the cars had the engine, the cylinders and all oh, those wow. things. So yeah. when they had issues, making those things so I was the one who had to figure out what was the problem and prescribe mm -hmm. medicines for that and change the process so that uh, the casting that came out it was perfect. It was perfect, right? No flaws or anything. No flaws for that, right. Okay. So wow. how long did you do that? I was there in Delhi for 15 years okay. and working uh, in Delhi. Okay. Wow. And how did you end up with um, being God's servant? So, um, my wife came to US in 2000 to write RN exam. She came to Florida, but she could not pass that exam. Uh, she did not get a job, so she came back. And in 2001, we again applied for a tourist visa to come to US to write uh, RN exam. Uh, I was working there. My wife was not working. She was a housewife. She didn't want to work. Uh, I had a desire to come to United States. She never wanted to come to United States. But anyway, God opened the door. She could get a visa to come and write the RN exam. And when she came here, she could not write the RN exam. 2001, April, she came here. And the exam was in the month of May. But she went to a wrong place and she could not write the exam. So the next step to move ahead was wait three more months. Wow. So then she uh, registered herself in Kaplan, she started her studies here, and then September 11th happened. That's right. And during that time, all the H-1B visas were canceled. So right. she was stuck here. Is that her on the, at the door? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. So we have, it looks like we have other guests coming for our yeah, interview. Yeah, so uh, that'll be great to know that, you know, we have a whole bunch of people willing to listen to your interview, <laughs> sure. which is great. Sure, sure. Okay, you can continue. Yeah, so um, then she uh, wrote the exam, she got the license, but because her H1 visa was cancelled, so uh, she could not go back to India, she remained here, and it took almost four and a half years for her to get a uh, immigrant visa, and okay. we as a family joined her in 2006. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so, uh, so so more about how you came to the ministry, like when, when did that start? Did that happen in Delhi? Did that happen, you know, in the U.S. or on the way to the U.S.? I mean, what, what was it? Uh, how, did it how did it start? What, what pricked you to, to say, hey, look, I would love to, to you know, be in service in the Lord, in the Lord so for the Lord? 
So there's a very nice question. So this happened in the year 2004. Okay. Um, where my life completely was changed. Mm -hmm. So from a worldly man, uh, I became a spiritual man. Okay. Okay. So I separated my life, committed my life to the Lord. So God caught me. I was like being rebellious, not listening to his voice. So I had a very severe disease and I was admitted to the hospital wow. 2004 January. And I was there for one month and the doctors, they could not find out what's the problem. So I was almost uh, to the death point. And then uh, wow. that was the time when I committed my life to the Lord, separated my life for his work and said, God, if you give me a new life and if you reveal to the doctors what's the problem, uh, that life would be only for you. Right. And wow. that evening, uh, God showed the doctors what the problem was and that's how uh, I got a new life. And wow. since then, I have been serving the Lord. Wow. So he actually brought you to that point before revealing his the, the promise that he had in you and before revealing you know, your purpose in Him, He had to ha bring you to that point of desperation to, to uh, you, would, you can kind of say, right? Mm, uh, it's, uh, I believe that He was already talking to me, right. but I was not heeding to His voice. Mm -hmm. I was a bit rebellious. So like in the Bible, mm, there's a character, Jonah. You know, God had commanded him to go to a certain place uh, to share the gospel, but he was rebellious. So right. He had to go through problems in his life when he was in the uh, belly of the fish for three days and uh, at that moment he surrendered his life to the Lord so I believe my situation was also the same. Uh, I didn't have to go through this but I was not listening to him and that's how that happens in everyone's life. Sometimes we don't listen to God's voice. It's not that God hates us. He loves us. He wants us and that's why he is following us. Right. So when we are rebellious, we don't listen to him, then uh, difficulty comes in our way, sickness comes in our way, where we surrender ourselves when we see no hope. And that's the time when I committed my life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord uh, gave me a new life and the problem was revealed to the doctors and they wow. could treat me. Wow. So, so all things work together. Right, right. So was your condition that serious? You know. I, yeah, it was run. it was very bad because for the one month I was in the hospital, uh, and uh, they had because they could not find out what's the problem. And then the the day I committed my life to the Lord, that evening I started bleeding. Mm -hmm. And once the bleeding started, they knew what the problem was, and they found out they were bleeding ulcers in my intestine. Oh. And wow. once the bleeding started, you know they could not uh, stop it. So the thing is my hemoglobin went down to four. Wow. So wow. they knew the problem because they did the uh, procedure, they did the endoscopy and they could find out bleeding ulcers. But because there was no blood in my body, so they were reluctant to do the surgery. Wow. Awesome. So praise God yeah, that praise God, you yeah. went through that and now where you are, you know. So yes, praise yes. God for that. Yeah, I remember one brother who just entered, you know, so he he yeah, told he's one of our guests, actually. Yeah. yeah, so he told me that he came to do the last prayer for me, you know, so I, he he, see, he he saw me. I, I didn't know my condition because I was almost like a dead person. Uh, I didn't have any strength or anything, but he said I had come to the hospital to do the final prayer. Wow. You know, so say goodbye to you, but God spared my life and today here I am. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Great. God has a purpose for right. you and He's doing His purpose in your life. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, that's what I want to encourage the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, there are times in our life when God is speaking to you and me every moment. So we are here in this earth with not our plan. Right. So we are here with a purpose, not our purpose. Right. So we are here with a plan of God and purpose of God. Sometimes we don't want to listen to Him. We want to follow our own ways in this world. Right, but we know that this world is not ours, and God has said that this place does not belong to us. We have an eternal home. So my um, my advice to those people who are rebelling against God, not listening to Him, you know, why do you want to go through the problem that I went? You know, it's because the pain that I went through. It was a lot of pain. 
Uh, three times my stomach was ripped open. I don't have one and a half feet of intestine in my stomach. So uh, four months, si almost six months, sorry, I was in this medical condition. So if I would have listened to God, I didn't have to go through this process. So why do you want to go through this pain? Listen to him. You know, God loves you. God loves me. He does not want you to fall down. So before we fall down, he wants to correct us, but sometimes we are, we as human beings, right, we rebel and then God has, because it's not because he does not want us, he wants us, therefore he will follow us till right. he finds us and right. that was the only option, you know, so when I was on the deathbed, my eyes, till then, before that was focused, it was looking to the world, Right. I was always busy with the worldly things, yeah. trying to make money, you know, even though I was, I was not a bad guy, like, you know, doing bad stuff. I was a godly person, very active in my church, church and all that but right. focused in the worldly direction. Right. But when I was on the hospital bed, my eyes, instead of focusing uh, in the world, it was focused towards heaven. Wow. Yeah. So then I could, I means God could talk to me, right? God was always talking to me, but I could listen to his voice. Mm -hmm. So I could surrender my life to him. Wow. So you kind of had to go through the fire to escape hell. Right. Wow. That's a... Uh, very interesting uh, thought because you know there's a lot of people that go through a lot of issues and they don't realize what it is and they try to find other ways out of it Correct. but it could just be the pull of that love of God that's just trying to pull you closer and, and in order to do that it's got to wake you up a little bit right yeah not only that it yeah. strengthens you I believe that you know that has because I was a metallurgist so you know all these metals that I was talking to they they are put in the uh, a casting area before that you know they yeah. melt those metal yeah, yeah. so why do they melt it so that you know get to get the pure metal Fine, out yeah. refined you yeah. know so when that goes through that heat then right. only it gets melted and all the dross that's the dirt comes to the top and then you remove the dross and you right. get the clean metal and then that metal can be casted where there's no defect so there is a refining in our lives you know all this process that I went through it was basically refining my life, taking unwanted things from my life so that I could be more perfect in his sight. We all are imperfect people, but right. God wanted to use me and he wanted to take all those dirt from my life so that I could be an utensil, a profitable utensil for him. Wow, that's great. So what ministries are you doing now? I mean, what's your ministry about right now? So right here in 2023. So we are, as I mentioned, we are focused, we are um, in Houston, based in Houston. So uh, we have various ministries in the northern part of India, uh, Bihar, Bengal, and Jharkhand. Okay. So we are into church planting. Uh, so we re reach out to the interior villages of all these places. So the biggest advantage that I have is because I was uh, there in northern part of India most of my life. So I can speak almost seven to eight languages so I, seven to eight languages yes so, so I, you, you mean there's more than one language in India oh yeah right there are, there are hundreds of languages hundreds of languages yeah and thousands of gods and goddesses wow yeah just for our viewers you know yes kind of, so I can yeah. speak Bengali I can speak Hindi I can speak Bhojpuri uh, I can speak uh, my native lang mother tongue is Malayalam so I speak you know I can speak that language also so I have that advantage to go out to the people over there and share in, in their yeah. in their own language right, 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 right. so you can relate they can re, I can relate to them they can relate to me so that we, I don't need any interpreter there so they can understand me better mm -hmm. great yeah yeah it's always if you get the interpreter out the way it's a right. much better communication right? yeah so we are into church planting business over there okay so to the villages and uh, because as we all know um, these are the end times uh, and the persecution is not going to go down. It's increasing day by day. But this did not happen today. Right. But we are thinking this is happening now. This was already there when Jesus was on this earth. So he went through all this persecution. But now because of technology, awareness is there and we know these are happening. But this was already happening long time back. Right. So the greatest advantage that we have is we go to the villages and we stay there and we have changed that approach of reaching out to people okay okay oh, so so I, I i i heard you mention and i think you just use that as a just a, a, a usually we use it as a phrase like hey this is 
you know, some business. You said church planting business. And I, I believe what you're saying is, is you're intently going there to set up, but at the same time, uh, is there, is it profitable for you in any way? Like, you know, some people might think, well, he just, he just mentioned church planting business. Is it really a business? Is it, are you really profiting, like, you know, as far as money and things like that? I don't think so. I mean, as far as with, with, with ministry, you know, things like that, going with ministry. But um, can you clarify that? Sure. Yeah. Thank you for asking that question. So, yes, I am in a business of winning souls. Right. Okay. Uh, when you asked, is it profitable? Yeah, it's very profitable. Mm -hmm. So someone asked me, where do you work? Uh, as I mentioned, 15 years I was working in Delhi and I had my own business also. But now if somebody asks me, where are you working? I tell them, I work in a bank. Mm -hmm. So they ask me, which bank? Is it Bank of America? I said, no, I work in Bank of Eternity. Right. Oh wow, they have never heard about that bank. So uh, what is your salary? So I tell them, your resources are limited, but my resources are unlimited. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is a profitable business because I am winning souls for the Lord. Right. So that is the greatest business that you can have right. because those souls are for eternity. Right. You're so, saving, you're, you're allowing to, for people to, to be saved from what is, what we term hell. Right. Where, you know, there's no God, there's no peace, there's nothing there. Right. And, and, and God is enabling you to lift them out. Yeah, from right. eternal damnation. Right. So we are trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Who came into this world to die for sinners like me and like you. Because he loved us, obviously. He loved us. Right. And that's why he had to take the form of a man, come down on this earth and give his life on that cross. And so you're just sharing that love. Really. I'm sharing that love because he came to share the love and he loved me, he chose me. So we all are going to die one day. Right. We all are going to die. But the gospel that Jesus Christ preached to each one of us that this is not our eternal home. We have an eternal home uh, that is prepared for us. But only those people who have accepted Jesus as their personal savior can get into that eternal home. Mm, okay, so you're talking about the gospel right I'm, I'm sure that's probably uh, a new term to some people some of our listeners that are listening they might be thinking well what is this guy talking about gospel could you talk a little bit about that and um, you know expand a little bit on that yeah sure what is the gospel what are you what are you talking about? gospel the simplest meaning would be good news so now there are every day there are news right there are good news and bad news but this news is for eternity it's the same yesterday, today and forever. It does not change with the weather. It does not change with the economy. It does not change with your, my, your attitude or my attitude. Because Jesus Christ came 2000 years back into this earth. He died on that cross. He's, he gave his life. A righteous person. A person who committed no sin. But he took my sin upon himself. The sins of the whole world. And he gave his life on that cross. He died to pay that penalty because we all are sinners. Because the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. So as we all work, you have a wage, right? Yes. Uh, so our wage is death. So yes. that was our situation. But Jesus didn't want us to die. And die in the sense, not our physical death, our spiritual death. The death uh, for eternity. But Jesus took it upon himself on that cross so that we shouldn't die. We have a new life. And he died so that we could get a new life, the eternal life that we have in Jesus Christ. Great. So, Mr. Jamon, uh, what you have um, to tell our viewers about, do you regret looking back into your life uh, from a secular job, moving to Lord's ministry? What are your thoughts? Do you regret doing that? That's a very nice question. Uh, do I regret? No. I always believe the covenant that I have made is with my Lord, my Master. I can get away from the covenant that I make with you or the worldly people, but I cannot get out of the covenant that I have made with God. And I understand the ultimate goal is to reach to heaven because our life is very short. It is not eternal here, but we have an eternity. So right now, as I mentioned, I am working for my Lord. He is my boss. I'm accountable to him. Right. So Bible says, God says that if you honor me, I will honor you. So 
past 20 years back because it's almost 20 years I have been into full-time ministry since 2004 so I don't regret anything because God had promised me and God has promised each one of us that if you honor me I will honor you so we as a family honored our God our master our Savior and he has not let us down in front of men we are in a better place than we were 20 years back so coming to ministry yes we are not perfect but we are better human beings we are uh, better citizens right. and God is honoring us and God is using us and God is uh, blessing us in various aspects of our lives so what do you have um, any advices to the viewers who are planning to step into the ministry and thinking of whether I should do it I should not do it whether this is for me what do you what advice do you have for them yeah that's a very challenging question uh, we all are called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, because as Jesus loved us, he has loved every one of us, all human beings. But we are so privileged that we could hear the gospel within our families because we, are, we were taught about that, but there are so many people who have not heard the gospel. But we were privileged, but there are so many other people who are not privileged. So it is our responsibility because the Bible says, the more, because we are given more and we are accountable for more, right? right? So it is our responsibility to reach out to them to share the gospel that we have believed in and to share to them about that eternal heaven that we have and the, and the beautiful place that is reserved for us because we all are going to die one day. So uh, sometimes we don't think that way. Nobody is thinking about death. People are moving in this world in such a fast pace and yeah. we are living in this world thinking that this is our eternal home. Right. But our, our life can be gone in a few seconds, you know. I don't know if I will leave the next moment. That's right. So we have to think of eternity. So there, there is an author, a great American preacher. In his book, he, in his testimony, he made several resolutions, almost 70 resolutions. And every moment of his life, he lived focusing on that resolution. And he prayed to God that God may stamp eternity in his eyeball. Yeah, I heard that, yes. You know, stamping eternity in his eyeball. What a great testimony that person has. So, if eternity is stamped in my eyeball, my way of approaching things on this earthly things would be heavenly. Right. So, I won't be focused on the earthly things. I would be only focused on heaven. And that was his resolution. He said, God, the next moment that you gave to my life, it will be for you. I want to live this life on this earth with an eternal perspective. So please stamp eternity in my eyeball. That was a great testimony. Right. So life is very short. And if God is calling, God has already called you, right? It's Absolutely. not that to share the gospel, you know, you can share the gospel anywhere. You don't have to uh, go to the interior or to the rural as I am doing. But in your workplace, in your family, with your neighbors, wherever we get a chance, we should share the gospel. And yes. God is going to be in control of everything. Yes, it's not easy. But... We are not ultimately in control of everything. So we have to just put our trust in him as I trusted in him. And he is going to take control of everything. Right. As human beings, we won't understand. We will have troubles. We will have problems. But ultimately, he is the Lord of our future. So he knows what is best for us. And he has, he has reserved good things for us, for our future. But we don't know because we are not God. We, are not, we don't know anything about our future. Right. But he is the Lord of the we're, af we're afraid a lot of times. Many right. times we don't uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen. Yes. So you know, but that putting that trust and that faith in God. Yeah, the faith. That's a beautiful word in Bible. You know, even one of the greatest disciple of Jesus, Peter. You know, so uh, he was he was on the water. Uh, Jesus said to walk on the water. So he was walking, and his eyes was focused on Jesus. Yeah. And then he got scared because how can you walk on water, right? Yeah, right. So. He started looking at the water, so he, he changed his attention and focus from, the, uh, from Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then he was sinking. But he didn't see Jesus didn't allow him to sink, right? right but right, right. humanly speaking, he was sinking, right? Yeah. So as soon as he looked at Jesus, uh, your eyes, if you right. change your focus from Jesus, you are going to sink in this right. world. Yeah. But if you are focused on Jesus, he is in control of everything. Because he is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, he is victorious, right? Amen. And he seated in heaven today at the right hand of God the Father. Right. Awesome. Yeah, so I think we could wrap up 
very shortly, um, as uh, Mr. Uh, Jim and John was saying, putting your trust in Jesus is the one and only way to be able to taste and see that God is good. The Bible says the taste we have, we have to taste and see that the Lord is good. And if you, anyone, any one of you in our uh, as our viewers, if you are have been thinking or contemplating and saying, you know, I want to taste that, you know, you have to have the trust. You have to believe in order to taste. And because that's what that verse says, right? Taste right. and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in Him. So uh, that let that be. Uh, something that we can also take away uh, and if you guys have any questions or anything you can feel free to reach out to us and uh, so uh, before we go I want to uh, ask you so you said you have, uh, you have your families here in Houston um, I've heard that you guys are like a music family true yes so could you kind of just uh, uh, you can just uh, if you could just explain or not explain but just introduce your your family and, sure. uh, and, and tell us what they do so my wife, uh, uh, she works for MD Anderson, and uh, she's a faculty there. She's a manager now. Uh, she's doing research, okay. and she's one of the managers of there. My oldest daughter, she is in Dallas, mm -hmm. so she's an architect. She started working there. My wow. okay. second nice. daughter, she is in Oklahoma, uh, second year of a law school. Uh, nice. So after that, she would become a lawyer. And my uh, third child, uh, I have a boy, and he's in eighth grade. Okay, and the wow. youngest one, she's in sixth grade. So I have four kids. Wow. And all of them, uh, God has gifted them uh, uh, with the talent of singing and using the instruments. So okay. my oldest daughter is a very good singer. She plays violin. My wife is a great singer. She can sing Hindi, English, Tamil, uh, Malayalam, uh, Bengali, and all other various wow. languages. That's God has gifted her. Uh, and then uh, my son is also a, a very good singer. So I'm trusting that um, God will use him in the coming days right. also. Right. What a gift of Great. family, right? Yes, here. definitely a gift of family. We want to thank you once again, uh, uh, Mr. Jaymon. And uh, we want to thank Tilly DiCiaco. We want to thank you for hosting this. And uh, uh, we're going to be signing out. Of course, Thomas. Yeah. So we're going to sign out. Until next time, guys, take care and God bless. Bye. Thank you.